Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore were originally sent on a short seven-day mission, but unexpected circumstances turned their stay into a staggering nine-month ordeal on the International Space Station. What went so wrong that a seven-day mission stretched into nine long months? Let's dive deep into the full story and uncover the details. The topmost section of a rocket is called a capsule, which serves as the astronaut's seating area. This capsule not only carries them to the International Space Station, but is also responsible for bringing them back safely to Earth. NASA already had the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, a reliable spacecraft that had successfully completed multiple missions to the ISS. However, NASA wanted an additional alternative, so they decided to test Boeing's CST-100 Starliner capsule. The Starliner capsule was designed to carry a total of five astronauts, but for this mission, only two astronauts, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, were on board. Beneath the astronaut seats, there is a storage compartment where essential supplies and an emergency survival kit are securely stored for their journey. Once the astronauts take their seats, the seats rotate upward, positioning them in front of high-tech screens that display crucial data about the rocket's systems, allowing them to monitor every performance parameter in real time. For this mission, NASA used a brand new rocket called Atlas VN-22. Technically, there was nothing wrong with this rocket. The rocket was equipped with two side boosters, which provided extra thrust during launch. Additionally, it had a liquid propellant engine in the center, serving as the primary power source. Above this engine was another stage containing two cryogenic engines, specifically designed to function efficiently at high altitudes. At the very top of the rocket sits the capsule, where the astronauts are seated, ensuring their safe journey to the International Space Station. Since 2020, NASA has been relying on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which is a reusable launch vehicle. Its working mechanism is quite fascinating. 30 minutes before the launch, a thorough system check is conducted to ensure that there are no technical issues in either the rocket or the capsule. At the moment of liftoff, an immense amount of thrust is required in the initial few seconds. To achieve this, solid rocket boosters and the liquid propellant engine fire simultaneously. Solid rocket boosters function similarly to conventional rockets. They continue generating thrust as long as there is fuel, but their power is exceptionally high. Around three to four minutes after launch, the solid boosters detach, leaving the liquid propellant engine to push the rocket further. Eventually, this engine also runs out of fuel, detaches from the rocket and falls back to Earth. Now, the cryogenic engine is activated. This engine is extremely powerful and functions efficiently at high altitudes. One of its key advantages is that it can be switched on and off as needed. All previous engines used so far had a fixed burn duration and would shut down only when their fuel was completely depleted. However, the cryogenic engine offers flexibility as it can be restarted when required. The cryogenic engine positions the capsule into the Earth's lower orbit and then separates, leaving the capsule to follow a precise trajectory toward the International Space Station. So far, all rocket engines had functioned perfectly, separating right on time, with no technical failures whatsoever. But now the real test of the Starliner capsule begins. Now the Starliner capsule moves forward, following its trajectory to dock with the ISS. This capsule is equipped with multiple helium thrusters, which help keep it on the perfect trajectory by firing at precise intervals. At the front of the capsule, there is a protective cap, which opens during docking, as this is the connection point between the capsule and the ISS. This section also contains thrusters, which assist in precisely positioning the capsule. However, the Boeing Starliner's thrusters started to malfunction. They were not firing properly causing the capsule to drift slightly off its trajectory. These thrusters operate using two separate tanks. One tank stores helium gas at high pressure, and whenever the thrusters need to fire, this gas applies pressure on the hydrazine fuel tank. This pressure forces the hydrazine fuel into the thruster where it ignites and releases hot gases, generating thrust. However, in this mission, there was an uncontrolled leakage of helium gas from the tank. As the pressure dropped, the thrusters failed to fire properly, causing the capsule to gradually drift off its trajectory. Typically, this entire process is autonomous, but in situations where the engines malfunction, astronauts can manually control the capsule. Now, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore realized that there was a problem with this capsule. 
they quickly switched to manual mode and began controlling it themselves. It took them 24 hours to successfully dock the capsule with the ISS, but in the end they managed to complete the task successfully. However, astronauts cannot directly enter the ISS. There is a special system called the Pressurized Mating Adapter, or PMA. The PMA acts as a connection point between the ISS and the capsule. First, the pressure is equalized. Then the ISS hatch is opened, followed by the capsule hatch, allowing the astronauts to enter. Just as astronauts enter the ISS, there is also a specific process for returning to Earth. Initially, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore were supposed to stay on the ISS for just seven days. They assumed that the Starliner capsule would be repaired at the station, but unfortunately that wasn't possible. As a result, NASA decided to send the capsule back to Earth without any crew on board. This left Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore stranded on the ISS, turning their seven-day mission into a nine-month-long stay in space. Fortunately, SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule was already available on the ISS. Since it had successfully completed multiple missions before, NASA decided to bring both astronauts back to Earth using this reliable capsule. First, the Crew Dragon capsule was undocked from the ISS. It was carefully maneuvered to maintain a safe distance from the ISS, ensuring that there was no risk of collision. The ISS orbits Earth at a staggering speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. Even a minor mistake could cause significant damage. So following proper protocols was absolutely crucial. As the capsule begins its descent toward Earth, it fires its thrusters to ensure it enters the atmosphere at the correct speed and trajectory. At the moment of atmospheric re-entry, the capsule is traveling at a speed of 27,000 kilometers per hour. However, before entering, it jettisons its trunk section, which houses solar panels and radiation shields. The trunk provides power to the capsule and shields it from space radiation, but since it's not needed during re-entry, it is detached before entering the atmosphere. As the capsule enters Earth's atmosphere, the heat shield at the bottom protects it from the extreme heat generated by atmospheric friction. During re-entry, temperatures can soar up to 2000 degrees Celsius. Without the heat shield, the capsule would melt completely due to the intense heat. The capsule gradually reduces its speed, and once it reaches an altitude of around 10 kilometers, two small parachutes deploy. These small parachutes help slow down the capsule even further, reducing the impact force during landing. Then, two large main parachutes deploy, ensuring that the capsule makes a smooth and safe landing in the Atlantic Ocean. As soon as the capsule splashes down in the ocean, the SpaceX recovery team quickly arrives and safely retrieves the astronauts. Finally, Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore successfully return to Earth, safe and sound, without any injuries. However, after spending such a long time in space, their bodies struggle to adjust back to normal life on Earth. Since the ISS has microgravity, astronauts who spend months there struggle to readjust to Earth's gravity, experiencing dizziness and other health issues upon return. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to watch more such exciting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.